Max, yes. we are continuing our series of postmortems on the college football teams across the Lone Star State. There's a lot to get to. Yes. And we still have, I believe, five more to do. Including this one? Including this one. Okay. Uh, four more after this. Yeah. Four okay. more after this. We will start. We are talking today about the North Texas Mean Green. The North Texas Mean Green go to a bowl game this year at 5-7. and seven. They were because they had, uh, I think, the second highest APR. It was them and Army. They were 1-2. Yeah. and two. And so they were, uh, when there weren't enough spots to, to fill bowl games, uh, they were led into the bowl. And it was actually a rematch of their game earlier this year. Uh, they end up losing it. They finish with the very bizarre five and eight record. I would love to see a list of teams that finished five and eight. Hawaii's probably among them because they always play thirteen yeah. games. But um, I don't know. They they finish with a very bizarre record. But overall, I think this was a good season for North Texas. I think that in the first year under Seth Luttrell, coming in, kind of revamping this offense and and making it something to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, I think considering where they were when Dan McCartney left. To where they are now, I yeah. think that I think the 2016 uh, North Texas season has to be considered an unmitigated success. Yeah, the excitement level for the program right now is exactly where you want it to be. So let's start our postmortems, Max, uh, with the first question, which is what went right. And I'll tell you, when you look at the North Texas stats, it's hard to know. It's really hard to know <laughs> because they weren't like overall the stats are yeah. are, are kind of underwhelming. Uh, I mean, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I'll tell you where they, what they did well, okay, and where what things went right is that they made plays in the passing game, okay. Mm-hmm. Defensively is what happened. Is that they ranked um, they ranked eighth in the nation in opponents completion percentage, which oh, wow. is really impressive. That's really impressive. I mean, that's yeah. that's you know, that's that's pretty darn good. Yeah, we you know. Opponents only completed less than 52% of their passes against them. That's really good. That's really good, yeah. They also picked off the ball a lot, okay? Uh, 20th in the nation interception percentage. Uh, they were really good overall. Not really good, but they were pretty darn good yeah. against the pass defensively. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing that the, you know that they did pretty well, which is, which is bizarre because that's kind of the only thing they did really well. You know, they took the ball away. They took the ball away. One, you know, one point eight times per game. Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, but really, what's funny is that normally there's one or two other things that they did pretty well. They just they just really didn't. Their sack percentage was okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was fifty third in the nation yeah. as is as far as that's concerned. It was okay. Yeah. Uh, but overall, this team just you know, aside from basically the passing defense. Yeah. This team didn't do a ton of things really remarkably well. So you told me you were doing this uh, earlier today, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm trying to think back of the season and how it unfolded. And I do remember, at least anecdotally, and I'd have to look at the play-by-play and the drives in these games, I think the one thing we came away with is, oh, you know, Seth Rattel's an offensive guy, Mm -hmm. but really they made plays defensively. Now it shows in the the past completion numbers you're sharing, Mm -hmm. but I do feel like anecdotally we watched these games and down the stretch Mm -hmm. they found ways to make stops in a sort of uncanny manner. Well, And what's funny is that normally you'd say, oh, well, they made plays in the the passing game, you know, defensively. That would mean they were probably really good on third down, right? Nope. (laughs) Terrible. 125th (laughs) in the nation opponent third down percentage. They were terrible on third down. So let's get over to what went wrong. Which is like honestly, the offense was not good. Yeah, the offense was not good. You know, they were. Um, let's see, from a rushing perspective, we talked so much about Jeffrey Wilson, but they three point eight yards per carry, ninety right. eighth in the nation. Uh, yards per pass attempt is one hundred tenth in the nation, six point two. The offense, and we knew this. We knew they didn't have a ton of weapons. You know, we yeah. knew that they were undermanned. Basically, aside from Jeffrey Wilson, and then the quarterback situation with Alec Morris. Later, Mason Fine came in. Yeah. We knew they were a little bit undermanned. They also gave the ball away a fair amount. I yeah. mean, they were, you know, like they get they took the ball away 1.8 times per game, right? They gave it away 1.7. Okay? Yeah. Like they were not good. And that'll uh, happen with a true freshman quarterback especially. 70 uh, 74th in the nation in 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 interception percentage. The offensive line was not good. They got sacked, uh, you know, 9.3% of the time, their dropbacks. Overall, it's kind of mystifying. And, by the way, they were one of the worst rushing teams defensively in the nation. Yeah, They were 109th in the, in the nation in rush yards per game. Now, part of that is that they played Army twice. But, overall, it's kind of baffling to see how they got here. 
basically what this comes down to, and I promise you I'm not trying to crap on North Texas because <laughs> you you get take the wins however you came. Things are looking up. It's okay. They didn't really beat a good team. Right. They beat Bethune-Cookman. You need to beat the teams you need to beat, though. They beat Rice, who's not good. We've already cataloged that. Right. They beat Marshall. Okay. Their best win of the year is they went to Army, and they and they won. And, but that was an Army team that was so up and down. Yeah. That, yeah, this team beat Navy, but yeah. like overall, this team was so up and down. And then they beat Southern Miss, who was not good. Yeah. And then they, you know, those were their five wins. Yeah. They didn't beat a good team, but you can only play the teams on your schedule, and they did enough to beat them. Now, here's another thing: is that they didn't they didn't like blow out these teams. Like they beat Southern Miss by six, uh, they beat Rice by seven. Uh, you know, they 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 really didn't blow teams out. So part of that, you know, part of it is that the, you know, and on the other on the flip side, when they lost, they tended to lose big. They lost mm-hmm. a, they lost to Florida thirty two to thirty two nothing. They lost to Middle Tennessee thirty to thirteen. Yeah. Uh, you know they lost to Western Kentucky forty-five-seven, so that's going to skew the numbers as well. When they lost, when they won, they won close, and when they lost, they tended to lose big. Yeah, that's part of it. But the bottom line is that they went to a bowl game, which is they are one of six teams in the state that can say that. Yeah, they got that extra week month of practice, which is so critical to, for them. Yeah, especially when you're building. Something. Exactly, and you know they they go to a bowl game, they end up coming up short in overtime to Army, but you know what? I think overall it's a a, a pretty successful year. Sure. If you're looking for a team MVP, it's easy to say Jeffrey Wilson. Right. I think that Jeffrey Wilson's the easy choice. He runs for almost a thousand yards and fourteen touchdowns. Steady as she goes. Really, the most reliable, steady, the most right. reliable offensive weapon uh, that they had. I would also say uh, you could look at a guy like Nate Brooks. Their def- uh, their defensive back who had four interceptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keyshawn McLean was great. Eric Jenkins was was very solid as well. In fact, Eric Jenkins had two pick sixes yeah. uh, on the year. Uh, you know, overall, I would say it's probably McLean. McLean is probably the guy who led the team in tackles. Um, I would say Keyshawn McLean is probably uh, your MVP. I think, mm-hmm. and I, I agree with all these picks, I do think you can make an argument for Mason Fine if you're grading mm-hmm. on the curve of true freshman quarterback. True freshman, forced into service because of right. the injury to Alec Morris. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. I think yeah. you can make an argument for, for Mason Fine. Uh, but overall, for me, I would say when you look at what the strength of this team was, which was in the secondary, and you think about who the best player they had in the secondary was, Keyshawn McClain, I would say that he's probably uh, he's probably the team MVP in my mind. Now, let's look at 2017. All right. This all depends They're on... They're going to win Conference USA. All right, we're done. All right. All right. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for saying. No. Um, <laughs> this all depends on are you a glass half full or glass half empty type of guy. Come on. So. How could you be anything but full? So, from a, you know, okay. <laughs> Overall, first of all, I think they have the weapons to compete. Okay. And I think that, they're, I think that their recruiting class is only going to fuel this as well. I think this is a very solid recruiting class they just signed. So, you bring back Jeffrey Wilson. You've got your anchor there. Um. Mason Fine presumably is going to take over as a full-time starter. I think in the flashes that we saw from him, he looked like he could be the guy. Uh, you're bringing back a guy like Turner Smiley. You're you know you're bringing back a couple of other receiver uh, receiving options uh, on the on the outside. Um, you are losing Thaddeus Thompson, who is your leading receiver, but you bring back T. Goree. Um, you bring back Willie Robinson. You've got a number of weapons. Willie Ivory uh, at the running back spot is going to be, I think, a, a guy to to watch out as well. Defensively, they're going to lose a lot. Okay, defensively, they're losing th- two of their three linebackers. Uh, they are losing James Gray and, and Chad Davis in the secondary. Uh, they're losing Malik DeLonga uh, and uh, Jared Col- Col- Combs rather up front. And the offensive line, they're losing two of their five starters. They're losing their center, Sam Rice, and they're losing Keenan, uh, Trey Keenan, their, Not great. Their, um, their, sa- or their right tackle. Overall, though, I mean, for me, I think that, I think that having that extra month of practice— mm-hmm. Having a good recruiting class, having a little bit of momentum, and also just having a full year yeah. under Seth Luttrell, right? I think is going to pay dividends. If you're looking ahead to their to their schedule, let me pull up their 2017 schedule. This will be interesting. I probably should have this pulled up. It's okay. You had everything else. I really did. Um, you know, overall, I think that I think that you you know, first of all, they they always North Texas is is so so funny because they always schedule one. 
I, I think it's because it's it's left over from their days in the Sun Belt where they had to do these things. Right. Like they're going to Iowa. <laughs> I mean, that's probably a loss. But like they get, they get Lamar at home in the opener at SMU. I think it's gonna be a fun game. Yeah. You know, I think it'll be yeah. a fun game. SMU will be favored, especially at yeah. home. But that'll be a fun game. And then honestly, I think Conference USA is down next year. Probably. Um, yeah. I think Conference USA takes a step back, at least at the top. Yeah. And so I don't see any reason why North Texas can't get to six, seven wins. Um, I think that this is a program on the rise, and I think that if you're a North Texas fan. It's time, you know. It's it, it's time to buy in on this program because I think that the the direction that Seth Luttrell is taking this program is a positive one. Question, answer. If you're picking between the two, mm-hmm. who has the better finish, better record next year, North Texas or UTSA? Boy, that's tough. I know they do play each other. Yeah, uh, they play October 14th at uh, at uh, Apogee Stadium, which I maybe I'll just go to that game. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um. If I'm picking right now, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's tough, right? Because I think we both agree, right? Of the of the CUSA Texas teams, it's between those two next yeah, year. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Rice, you know, is is, is coming yeah. off of a bad year, licking their wounds. Exactly right. And then uh, and then UTEP. Who knows what UTEP? Who knows what UTEP's yeah. going to be? I think you're right. I think right now maybe you go with North Texas because really? they have they have more steady quarterback play. That's and you know if that's the tiebreaker, mm-hmm. they both have quite they both have holes to fill, but. Sure. Um, I think they have. St- I think they have more reliable. Um, I think it's close, though. I think they're. I think they're going to be really even yeah. next year, and I think that yeah. game, October fourteenth, uh, at North Texas, Could is going to be a fun game. Yeah. So right now, slight edge to North Texas, if only because they have that uh, the quarterback edge. Yeah. But uh, but overall, I mean, it's I think close. I think the future is bright for both of yeah. those teams. And I think both of them are going to benefit from having that extra month of practice for bowls. Mm-hmm. So. 